Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Chevy Corvette Z06 convertible. We are going to take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. I've been itching to get back behind the wheel of the Z06 since the first drive event almost a year ago now, and this being the convertible should give me a little different impression. You can tell the Z06 apart from the regular Corvette by the distinct lower bumper with tons of functional ventilation, including brake ducts. And this one has an optional carbon fiber front splitter that juts out quite a bit. There are projector LED headlights with LED DRLs and turn signals. This one is painted in Lake Elkhart blue metallic. And you know I like my blues. Just doesn't wow me on this car. Not sure why. At the side, we find a standard set of 20 inch forged alloy wheels up front. This one painted in gloss black. You get 21 inch wheels out back. They're wrapped up in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 275 section front and 345 at the rear. Within those wheels are Brembo six piston front brakes clamping on steel rotors. You can get carbon ceramics as an option. There's more carbon fiber for this extended side sill. The Z06 has widened inlets in the side to heat exchangers. Stepping back to look at the profile with the top up, the convertible has a very similar silhouette to the coupe and those not in the know may be tricked. I kind of like that. Let's see what it looks like with the top lowered. Okay, top is down now and I didn't even have to get in the car or start it up. I just hit this button here on the key fob. And still from this angle, you might think it's the coupe because the coupe has the removable roof portion. It's only as you start to get to the back that you see those two defined cowls behind the front chairs. And you'll note the missing window to the NAV8. This is all covered up in the convertible. And here at the back, we've got the Z06 spoiler that's flared up, but not nearly as aggressive as the Z07 package's giant wing. We still have the thin LED taillights and turn signals. And like the front, there's a unique rear end design with all functional airflow, a jutting diffuser, and four center exit circular exhausts. Unlike the regular Corvette, which has them on the ends and they're squared off. This look is much, much better. And though I think the convertible is super well executed, I'm still drawn to the flow of the coupe. And that's my question for you. Which design do you prefer? Coupe Z06 or convertible? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this 3LZ interior or trim topping interior with what they call tension slash twilight blue dipped leather GT2 bucket chairs. They're heated and ventilated, power adjusting. You get aluminum accented foot pedals and aluminum Z06 tread plate. On the doors, there's that navy blue leather with blue contrast stitching and some gray stitched accents here. Leather continues all the way down the door panel. Some optional carbon fiber trim is here. Two one touch windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. This stows that back glass piece there. And this one lowers and raises the top. There's a Bose Performance Series sound system in this trim. Here are your releases for the front and rear trunk. Yes, you get all of this storage space in the back, enough for at least two full-size sets of golf clubs, and a front trunk, giving you a combined 13 cubic feet of space. Now, before I hop back in, we have to acknowledge the blue on blue on blue of this specification. And this is coming from a person who likes blue, like my black wing is close to that color in electric blue. But for whatever reason, these three together don't work for me. If it was just that navy colored blue leather and a lighter blue exterior, I'd be on board. Guiding myself in with the A-pillar while also kind of limboing away from it so I don't bonk my head here. Closing the door. The sound is solid. A little bit of a rattle. Ooh, that animation of the flat plane crank V8 on the gauge cluster and then the Corvette logo on the infotainment screen. What a welcome for you. This one has the optional carbon fiber wheel. It's squared off like all Corvettes and it does make you feel like a racing driver. With the carbon fiber paddles on the back as well, you gotta put the vehicle in accessory mode to keep that gauge cluster going. We'll do that in a sec. We've got a head up display, stitched leather up on the dashboard, thin air vents on the passenger side. That button there 
releases the glove box, carbon fiber all the way down the transmission tunnel, press that for cup holders. Further back under the leather here, we've got a little bit of storage with two USB ports in the console. This spine of climate controls, I've very much gotten used to and appreciate because they're all physical buttons. Drive mode selector is here under this leather topper, then your traction control, the front end lift system, which is an option, and the camera system with your gear selection all in a line here. I'm actually gonna need to fully start it up to raise the lid and show you headroom, so. <laughs> that spoiled the surprise of the soundtrack. I'm sorry, had to do it. Okay, back to the infotainment for a second. It's an eight inch screen and it's very responsive. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Above me is a Swede wrapped headliner in, you guessed it, more blue. And then behind me is a wireless charging slot. To raise that lid, I'll pull up on this tab. And in about 16 seconds, at speeds up to 30 miles per hour, the top is gonna come up. Windows raised to complete the job. And the digital rear view mirror is now showing. Headroom situation for myself at six feet tall is closed, but my head does clear the roof. I don't know if I could fit on a helmet for track duty in the convertible, but I definitely could in the coupe. It's gonna get the thumbs up. And this cabin overall, despite my qualms with all the different blues conflicting with one another, is still exquisite in terms of the conveniences and the fit and finish here, not just for a Corvette, but in general. Now let's take the Corvette Z06 convertible for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. <laughs> that is a sound I could get very used to. Wow. Good morning, cabin crew. Thank you for joining for this review of the Z06 convertible. And two things to start us off. One, I felt better. I am I'm pretty sick today. So apologies for the deeper than average voice. And number two, I'm gonna lower this back glass piece here, which hopefully you can see on the cabin camera. If you can't, there's a piece of glass back there that lowers. So you don't have to take the top all the way down to hear from that NAV8, but we're gonna do it anyways. Down goes the lid. And we're done. I'm gonna lift the windows now. And we are gonna start off in the tour drive mode, which I don't even think I need to change. Ooh, that's my mode. And these are the settings for my mode. This is customizable. Engine sound is real loud in that one. Let's go to tour. And then to go into reverse, we pull back on this R tab. That brings up a super high resolution camera. Got your front view, rear shots, overhead of the front, that's really important. You don't want to scrape that carbon fiber front lip. And then a variety of different camera angles there. Also all the front, but they're showing the corners. That's really clever. And let's go back to the wide angle rear shot here. And scoot on out. Trajectory lines, of course. Up into drive with the back tab. And we will kick things off with a turning radius test as we do. So wheel pointed straight. Can I bring up the cameras here? There we go. Just a monitor. And it's, that's fine. Nothing amazing, but just fine. Turn signal sound. like a slow gallop in a horse. Clop, 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 clop. And the world famous horn test. Ooh, wow, that sounds so unique to me. I don't think I've heard a horn like that. What does it sound like? Just a little toot, toot, toot. I'm in a weird mood today. The powertrain in the Corvette Z06, convertible or not. 
forgive the rant that's about to happen, but I feel it's necessary to properly convey the magnanimity of this motor. So, the Z06 has never before had a bespoke engine to it. It shared the motor with the standard Stingray, but was tweaked, it was enhanced. Chevy, for this new Z06, said, no, 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 we're not doing that again. We're gonna come up with something completely its own and crazier than we've ever done before. So this is how I imagine the conversation went between the two lead engineers, development chiefs for the new Corvette Z06. All right, Bill, what did you say you wanted to do? Um, I wanted to make the most powerful, naturally aspirated V8 in a road car. Bob, you wanna, you, you wanna do this, was it Bill or Bob, I can't remember. Bill, you wanna do this as the, the internal combustion motor is being phased out? You, you wanna do this just like right before we're not gonna use it at all at GM because we're going all electric in 2030? Yeah, that's what I wanna do. All right, all right, how are we gonna do it? I think we're gonna need to borrow a Ferrari V8 and deconstruct it and then make it better. Bob, that sounds expensive. It will be, and complicated and difficult. All right, and, and this engine is, it's just gonna go in the Corvette and just this version of the Corvette? Yeah, that's the idea. And then GM goes ahead and creates a brand new 5.5 liter naturally aspirated flat plane crank double overhead cam V8. The result is unbelievable. Because they needed to make more power, they needed that flat plane crank, which had the lower inertia in the crankshaft, which means it's gonna spin faster, it's gonna rev higher, the engine's gonna breathe better, and give us 670 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. It revs to 8,500 RPM, and it revs there very, very quickly. It's connected to an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox and sends power to just the rear tires. This dual-clutch is your kind of conventional attributes of a dual clutch where at the low speeds it's a little bit clunky you're just getting on the power in a stoplight it's going to have that hesitant before it engages the gear and kind of like shunks you into place but in motion it's properly smooth and just sensationally quick and the motor is so easy to live with right now in the tour drive mode it's not all that loud it still has that little sense of exotic exhaust note to it and that exhaust note by the way because of the way this exhaust system is set up is completely variable it's not like in the regular stingray where it's like loud or quiet it's not binary in that way it has a complete spread the whole spectrum of tuning to that note as you're driving it so even in, let's go into my mode here rev range the properties change it just advances in certain elements of its musical range and it being an na engine it's so velvety smooth you don't have the delay when you're getting into the throttle it'll pick you up to speed but remains incredibly approachable. I want to talk about the ride quality for just a sec because around town if you've got the convertible top that's something that's going to be important to you. It's comfort cruising and with these three mode adaptive dampers and coil springs in the my mode setting where I have it as the softest ride even over imperfect surfaces this is so livable. It just is. It's not a luxury car ride. You still have the firmness and jostling of the body, but the dampening is sufficient. Now, when lifting this lid, it's important to note that you can do it at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. So if you are, like in my case, about to join a highway and you don't want to be hearing too much wind buffeting, as long as you're under that speed, the top, 
can make its conversion and then you can go enjoy. down to tour for this highway stint. And listen for the NVH level at these speeds. Okay, so I'm getting mostly road noise here. Wind noise is not a big deal, but there is a fair amount of road noise that's coming into this cabin. This is a loud road surface. I don't want to completely judge it based on this surface, but we were on a quieter surface just a moment ago. The Z06 is a track hardened car. So I want that to be understood going into this. But if you're thinking about this car being a do-it-all, something that you could go on a long road trip with, just understand that there is going to be a little bit of road noise. That's, that's really the only drawback. The seats are very comfortable to hold me snug in place. There's a lot of adjustability there to those and to the steering column. I feel like I'm seated, seated low enough. I mentioned, again, the headroom isn't as great in the convertible as I found it to be in the coupe. Now we need to go explore the real performance of the Z06 convertible. All right, it's time to unleash a little bit of the chaos with a real world zero to 60 test. We are facing a slight uphill, keep that in mind. I've got my race box set up here to record and to engage launch control. It's hitting the Z mode button twice to confirm performance traction management is active. I then hold my foot hard on the brake, in the throttle, let go. convertible is so quick but it's not even as quick as this car can be independent tests have seen a half second quicker than that the ability to do that is because of the mid-engine layout the weight over the rear tire off the line this dual clutch gearbox the width of these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 345 section at the rear. And the responsiveness of this engine. But the zero to 60 is just the tip of the iceberg. Listen to that. That noise is coming from an American built sports car. I cannot get over it. The brakes are up to snuff. The steering loads up nicely in the corners. Now the road surface, oh that's a bummer, isn't as palpable through the steering as I'd like. That's a deeper level of feedback than something like the hydraulic racked McLaren Artura gives the driver. However, the chassis in this Z06 is so balanced, so energetic, and does channel the road texture through my seat to my body that I have the communication I need to confidently push this car and for it to respond. it's a convertible you think about the loss of structural integrity that you have by cutting off the roof and the weight that's added above your head in theory it's there but I don't feel any of it it's just a 
a finely tuned machine. And I'm in track drive mode now with performance traction management still in sport. And the responsiveness of the motor is intoxicating. You just come out of a corner and that electronic limited slip differential is ready to dole out the power to the tire that has the grip. It does not roll. It just stays flat. And it just begs you. It wills you for more. And that engine note is so rewarding. Listen to it. Oh my gosh. fast guys but it's the balance of handling and that straight line speed that's really winning me over right now the weight transfer is so measured that it never feels unsettled I'm reminded of when I drove the coupe on track it could just do so much more. More than I was capable of extracting, that's for sure. And more than I'm willing to do here on a canyon road. But I'm still having a great time. And I've been really pleased how this gearbox is behaving in automatic mode, here in track mode. It's holding onto those gears, not giving me any weird upshifts and corners. showing off how great of a dual clutch the Z06 has at its disposal. But I want to try out manual mode. Hitting this button here using the large carbon fiber paddles eliciting near instantaneous shifts. <laughs> and treating my eardrums such a, an exotic choir all the way up to that 8600 RPM red line. Come on! <laughs> what? To at least the same level. And in some cases beyond the threshold of proper supercar competitors. This Z06 falls into a driving rhythm that you do not want to break from, that you can continue in for hours if the fuel would hold out. And with every corner, etch another line of the Z06 into the history books. This is a car enthusiasts will not soon forget. It's a car Americans should be proud of. <laughs> oh my gosh! What a machine! With that top back down, that's going to lead me into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Chevy Corvette Z06 convertible is hypnotic, meaning spellbinding or immersive, because every dimension to the Z06 convertible's drive, it's fully involving, it sucks you in, whether that's top down motoring at a casual speed with the wind in your hat or the sun on your hat or whether you're ripping through a canyon or even on the track with the top up this car could do it all of it 
is fully involving. It's enrapturing, which as a driver, that's, that's what you're looking for when you're spending this amount of money on a performance machine. And I really wasn't feeling the convertible before I started this review. I was like, oh, give me the silhouette of the coupe, give me the price point of the coupe, give me the laser focus and reduced weight of the coupe. And I still feel that way largely. But because of the fact that the coupe in this car doesn't change the dynamic capabilities of it too much. And because you can either just lower the back glass and hear some of that crazy NA flat plane crank, exotic V8 volume, whatever you want, or you drop the top and enjoy the Southern California weather, I can get on board. But we're not done yet. I gotta talk about competitors, but before that, I've gotta talk fuel economy, pricing, and top speed. Starting with the fuel economy in the Z06 convertible. It's 12 MPG in the city, 21 on the highway, and 15 combined. Though if you get the full Z07 aero package and all the little bits, it does reduce fuel economy by I think like one combined MPG. The top speed is 195 miles per hour. Again, that is reduced if you get the full aero package, which is great for downforce on the track not great for top speed runs. And the starting figure for the coupe version of the Z06 is about $109,000. If you want the convertible, it's a little under $117,000. But this one, as tested, is about 144,000 buckaroos. Competitors in this convertible supercar class include the Audi R8 Performance Rear Wheel Drive Spider that starts at $162,000. It makes 562 horsepower, gets to 60 in 3.7 seconds, has a top speed of 202 miles per hour and fuel economy of 17 combined. Or there's the McLaren 720S Spider that's $315,000 to start. It does make 710 horsepower, gets to 60 in just 2.9 seconds, has a top speed of 212 miles per hour and fuel economy of 17 combined. When you consider the alternatives, the Z06 convertible isn't just a wild value proposition. From between 45 and $198,000 cheaper than those other two vehicles. It's not just that, it is on its own epic. And I don't use that word lightly. What Chevy has accomplished here is off the charts. This is going to go down as one of the top five best American-made sports cars ever. That is a massive feat. And when you think about, all right, it looks great on the outside. Yeah, sure, the R8 is sharper. And the 720S Spider is going to draw more of a crowd. But it still has those supercar proportions. The interior feels well built and it's nicely accommodated. I've got every feature I would need. The driving experience casually is comfortable and totally amenable to daily driving. And then the Full Tilt's crazy performance is there in spades. To a degree, the R8 just can't even get close to matching. And the 720S Spider would have the fight of its life to keep up. That's, that's mind-boggling stuff. And it has me going, yeah, if you can find your way behind the wheel of one of these, if you can bring one of these home, do not just stick it in a garage and don't drive it because GM has already told me this engine was made to be used and pushed consistently. If you don't drive it, you're going to probably encounter more maintenance issues than if you drove it hard on the track all the time. But do yourself a favor. If you can get one, bring it home and enjoy it on the daily. That's, that's what Chevy has accomplished here, a daily drivable world-class exotic supercar for around 117,000 bucks. And I'm, I'm only a little upset that I, I didn't get this instead of the CT5 V Blackwing. I understand logically it has extra doors, extra seats for my family, for my kids. It's got the manual gearbox. That's awesome. You don't get that here. Only a little upset. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. I'll see you next time.